Good afternoon. This ceremony is came out of a meeting that I shared with uh, Megan from St. Croix Hospice as we discussed as we discussed what Isles does with flags. Uh, we thought this would be a very special ceremony to do. So for those of you who are sharing this with us, thank you. We appreciate you being here. And I just want to share what we what we do at Isles. We call it a flag's last deed of service. All of the retired flags processed in our flag cremation program, and we have flags right here, are disposed of with dignity and respect after an appropriate flag retirement ceremony. We drape the flag over a veteran's casket to be cremated, further honoring the veteran's military service. The family of the veteran receives a certificate stating the last deed of service for that flag was to drape their veteran during the cremation process. And as we proceed here to dedicate these flags, I'd like to introduce Reverend Jim Mead from St. Croix Hospice, who will proceed from here. Thank you for being here. If you're able, please stand for the posting of the colors. The National Defense Post. The National Defense Authorization Act of 2008 contained an amendment to allow ununiformed service members, military retirees, and veterans to render a hand salute during the playing of the national anthem. seated. Jane Hampton Cook wrote an article some time ago entitled, Why Do We Stand for the Flag? It says, Why do Americans stand for the U.S. flag and the national anthem? Americans have stood for the U.S. flag since June 14, 1777, the day the Continental Congress declared that the flag of the 13 United States be 13 stripes, alternate red and white, that the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field, representing a new constellation. 37 years later, in August 1814, the White House and the Capitol lay in ashes after the British military burned the public buildings in Washington, D.C. In the immediate aftermath, many Americans understandably feared that the Union Jack, the British flag, would soon fly over all America again. Hence, three weeks after the sacking of Washington, Francis Scott Key, a Maryland attorney 
who politically opposed the current president, was so moved at seeing the U.S. flag flying victoriously at the end of the battle for Baltimore's Fort McHenry that he wrote the lyrics for the Star Spangled Banner, the song we now call the National Anthem. First, we stand for the flag not to pleasure ourselves, but to honor those who pay the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. The more than 1.2 million Americans who have died because of war. We stand for soldiers who initially inspired our national anthem, such as William Williams, a runaway slave who later died after having his leg blown off as part of the 38th U.S. Infantry at the Battle of Fort McHenry. We also stand for more recent heroes, such as Robert Kelly, the son of White House Chief of Staff John Kelly, a Marine lieutenant who died in a roadside bomb blast in Afghanistan in 2010. I believe every American, when the national anthem was played, should cover their hearts and think about all the men and women who have been maimed and killed. Every American should stand and think for three lousy minutes, John Kelly declared in response to the controversy. Second, we stand for the flag not to focus on what divides us, but on what unites us, which is being an American. The name of American, which belongs to you, in your national capacity must always exalt the just pride of patriotism, more than any appellation de derived from local discriminations. With slight shades of difference, you have the same religion, manners, habits, and political preferences, George Washington our first president declared in his farewell address in 1796. The same is true today. More than being a New Yorker or a Texan or being a Steelers fan or Rams fan, the name American deserves our highest respect and pride. Standing for the flag and anthem at a sports game or other public gatherings symbolically shows that we are all Americans, no matter our race or religion no matter our preferred sports team, and no matter our political differences, standing is the ultimate salute to sportsmanship. We stand for the flag not to pledge allegiance to a president, but to honor the reality, reality that we have an elected president, not a lifetime king. By standing, we honor the fact that our, flag had, that our country has had 45 presidents, our flag reflects our system of government, divided by 50 states, the stars on the flag, but united by a federal government. The national anthem controversy in the NFL started during the term of our previous president and continues during our current president's term. Fourth, we stand not because of past or present pain caused by injustice, but to salute the principles of justice. This is one of the three definitions for the color blue that Congress gave us in 1782. The colors of those used in the flag of the United States. White signifies purity, purity and innocence. Red signifies hardiness and valor. And blue signifies vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Patriotism is not pride in the pain of our nation's past. Rather, patriotism is pride in the principles that pave the way for change, whether that change was trading royalty for representation in 1776 or exchanging enslavement for emancipation in 1863. From John Adams and Thomas Jefferson to Martin Luther King Jr., many, many Americans have stood for justice for, more, for a more perfect union. When architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. Their note was a promise to all men, yes, black men as well as white men, should be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, King declared in his 1968 I Have a Dream speech. King tapped the principles created by our founders and applied applied them to make justice a, rea a reality for all of God's children. 
And finally, we stand for the flag, not for our generation, but to set an example for the next generation. If we do not advocate a love for, of country to our children and the generations to come, then why would our children grow up to fight for their countries, the founding principles and morals of truth? Passing along patriotism is, a crucial, is crucial to the future and survival of America. The color of white in the flag symbolizes the purity and innocence of our children. When we stand for the flag and anthem, we are standing for our hopes for our children's future. That they will embrace the principles of patriotism and live out its moral truths of justice, perseverance, and courage. We stand for the flag and anthem so they can stand for the flag and anthem. In Isaiah chapter 66, beginning in verse 1, the Bible says very simply, Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made and all those things exist, says the Lord. And he's talking to a people who became very prideful of a temple. Very prideful of what they had. And so God is asking the question, Heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. Where is this building you built for me? But then he says these things. And to this man will I look. And that gives the idea of trying to find uh, honor in somebody. I'm going to look favorably on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. And the question that, that is for us today, and in fact for all people of this country, is that is, can we look your way? To this man will I look. And then as I will look upon favorably, I'm going to look for the next generation. Can we look your way? To him that is poor, that is someone who understands that everything I have, I didn't gain it myself. It was given to me. We live in the greatest nation in the history of the world. We need to have a real reminder that everything we have today is because somebody else gave it to us. The people who served, the people who fought and died in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, all the wars that have been fought in the history of this country have given their lives so that we can have what we have today. To this man will I look even to him who is poor. That is, understands that everything I have is not because I did it. It's because somebody else gave it to me. And to him who's of a contrite spirit, that gives the idea of being humble. To this man will I look, even to him who is poor, understand that all I have comes from somebody else, but also to him who is humble. One thing I can say without, without any reservation is that there are a lot of people, I don't care what your political persuasion is, there are a lot of people who need to understand a contrite spirit. The humbleness. Our country was not, is not great 
because of who we are individually. It's great because of who we are corporately. It's great because of who fought and died for us. And then someone who trembles. That means shows respect. Now in this context, he's talking about someone who trembles at my word, at the word of God. But in our context today, it means literally trembling at the documents that founded our country that have such a respect for what founded our country that we have this idea, how dare we disobey those founding documents? How dare we? There's not a politician in Washington, D.C. who's greater than the documents that founded our country. How dare we? I'm going to look favorably on those who tremble, have a humility, and say, I understand everything I have is because somebody else gave it to me. I look favorably on those who are humble. Humble enough to say, I, don't, I know I'm in a position of authority. But that doesn't mean that I reign over or am better than somebody else. We stand for the flag because we don't have a king. We have 45 elected presidents. And then someone who shows reverence, respect to those documents that founded our country. Can we look your way? To this person will I look? And that's the question. For a service like this, for any service, can we look your way? Do we have people that can honestly say, I have ultimate respect, not because of who I am, but because of that right there. I have ultimate respect. Can we look your way?
these flags have flown as a symbol of the sacrifice and dedication of our country. Today they are being dedicated for another use. They are being dedicated to be retired as they are being used to cover the bodies of veterans who are being cremated. There is no greater honor for a person than to give himself in service of his country. And therefore, there is no greater use for a flag than to be used to recognize a service to the country of one of our greatest citizens. And these flags have been inspected for retirement. At this time, we ask and invite the members of VFW Post 738 to fold the flag.
If you're able to, we ask you to stand. Very tiring of the cars. Once again, thank you for sharing with us this very special dedication. The flag means so much to all of us. And thank you for our color guard today so very much. Please head downstairs for some refreshments. We'd love to say hello. Thank you so much.